Hey, I'm just gonna buy Yugi Five, Yugi Five for you. And guess what time it is? Tis the season for shitty band lists. Fa la 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 la. Yeah, it's just tis season for band list season. It is time for a bunch of shitty band lists, but the good ones. It is post nets and time for your freaking inboxes, your subscription feed to be flooded with band list predictions as well as videos on. Fake banlists, you know how every time there's always these banlists that say they're real, and there's usually one big flaw, like one big hygienic red flag saying that this thing is false. So, anyway, how this is gonna work is, of course, gonna start with banned, limited, semi, and then unlimited. So, let's start with the banned cards. Now, all cards I talk about uh, are basically say I'm gonna want them banned or want to see them banned. I'm basically gonna talk about them because some people say they're probably gonna get banned. So, let's start off with Super Rejuvenation. This is a card that's pretty much heavily abused in dragons. E-Dragons, basically. Um, it's at 3 for the longest time because really no deck could really abuse it besides Exodia FTK and really that's only a big troll deck. Super Rejuv has a good chance of being banned or limited, but I could possibly see it get banned because it's not really a money maker card for them. They're not, going, they're not really going to hit the dragons at all. Like, the physically, like the actual E-Dragons themselves, uh, because they're so money makers, and plus since they're coming out in the tens, you know, it's money, money, money going toward them. So Super Juve is a pretty obvious choice for them to actually hit, to slow down the deck a little bit. Um, I think it'll make a little bit of a change in the deck, but it'll slow them down, but it really won't hurt the power or the speed the deck actually has. Next up is Monster Reborn. This is a card I always feel like is always on the chopping block in terms of cards to be banned every list. It's just one of these cards that has so much power packed into one card, it's always going to be up there on the chopping block. Now, personally, I don't care if it stays or goes. It, it, like, I don't really care. It's just one of those cards that it's, can, it always, it's always on Konami's radar, in my opinion. So, it, it, it's just Monster Reborn, enough said. Uh, next up is Power of Average. A lot of people are saying Average could get banned, and I, I see why they see that, but then no at the same time. Average is not really being used all that much right now, in terms of the main decks. Dragon Rulers don't use it, Spellbooks, I will actually love to use Spellbook players use this for like the 10 monsters they actually use. Um, Evil Swarms, Mermails, Castellers, I think Castellers, you know, I don't think they use Average, I can't remember. Uh, but you get where I'm going at. A lot of decks don't run Avarice right now, so it's not a heavily abused card. But, there is a card called Pot of Duplicity coming out and Shadow Spectres, so they might ban it to help push that. Um, other than that, um, that's the only reason I can see Avarice ever getting banned this format for September. It's because of Duplicity. But for use-wise, no, it's not going to get banned. I highly doubt it is. Okay, let's try this again, because every time I try to talk about this card, I get a black screen in editing. Ugh. So we got Heavy Storm Eater. I want to talk about this. Um, I'm not saying Heavy Storm is going to get banned. I'm going to talk about why Heavy Storm is not going to be banned. Um, a lot of people are bitching and about Heavy Storm, how it's so good. Yeah, it's a very good card, but here's the thing. It is a regulator card. It is a punishment card. It's a card that punishes the opponent for setting multiple back row with no protection. And... The theory of Heavy Storm doesn't bring skill in the game. Yes, it does. It brings skill into the game. Wanna know how Heavy Storm brings skill into the game? Simple. You, the, the user, you have your cards. You're fearing a Heavy Storm. You will have a Mirror Force, Compulse, Bottomless. You, you have some traps in your hand. It is up to you to decide what traps you don't care about. Save the good ones in your hand. And then you just set the ones that, you know, that will hurt your opponent, but at the same time, you're not really going to be hurting if you lose them to a heavy storm. This is where the skill aspect comes into play. But it is not the card's fault if you set a mass amount of back row with no protection and you lose it all because of heavy storm. That is not the card's fault. That is your fault. I'm sorry, but that is your fault for not setting any protection for all those cards. No delay road. No huge rivers over because you have also you have a lot of ways to stop heavy storm. Solemn, huge rivers over. Solar road, magic drain, dark bright, magic jammer. Yeah, I said magic jammer. It's an option. Who fucking cares? You also have starter dragon, Lagia, and Ontario beast, Legend of six samurai, Shi Yin. You have a lot of ways to combat the heavy storm. If you're playing freaking 
Um, what's his fate? Uh, Dark World! Drag down! I'll take that heavy something in your hand. Er epic eradicator Epidemic Virus! Ah, I'll take that heavy out of your hand. If you draw heavy, oh, that's going to the graveyard! There's a lot of ways to combat Heavy Storm, and I feel it's not necessary of being banning. It's perfectly fine at one, and I don't really think it should not go away anytime soon. Because formats where it's like some of the monsters that five, you know, really wasn't skillful, should get to bake down the back row. But Heavy Storm doesn't win game. It's a very good card, but people get the misconception that. You play Heavy Storm, you win. It's not a game-winning card. I have one game because of Heavy Storm, but it's not a permanent win. It's not like I play Heavy, I win. That's not how Heavy works. So, Heavy Storm not being banned. Sorry. Welcome to the limited section of the ban list. So, we're going to have some fun here. We'll have more fun in Center Limited, trust me. So, first off, we're going to hit the Gold Sarcophagus. I'm pretty much going to try to slow down Dragon even more, because even with Super Drew being banned, they're still an amazing fast deck, because Gold Sarcophagus exists. Gold Sarc, which allows your deck to your deck by two cards in each dragon, banishing a dragon, using that dragon's effect to add another dragon to your hand. It's really crazy. Now, some people may say, oh, ban Neckerface, but I feel like if you hit Gold Sarc to one, Neckerface is not going to be a big deal. Even though I remember correctly, a lot of the dragon decks don't really play Neckerface, at least it could be wrong. At least it I see, though, I don't see Neckerface all too much. Um, but I think hitting Ghost Rock to 1 will slow down the deck even more and allow other decks to kind of flourish it in a sense. And plus, it's just a really stupid card now. Uh, next up is Big Eye. This is one of these cards that people say should go to 1 or banned. Um, if they do hit it, it's going to go to 1, not banned, because it's still a money card and I really smell a reprint for Big Eye coming in the near future, possibly in the Dragon Tins. I think that'll be a perfect money maker for Konami. Um, there's some E-Dragon cards and 10 secret E-Dragons, and here's a super big eye to go with it. Um, people will buy the shit out of those 10s because they want the big eyes, they want the E-Dragon stuff, and that will be a good thing. But if they do hit the extra deck, um, big eye would most definitely go to 1 instead of Dragon Sack, because Dragon Sack is brand new, big eyes older, so you kind of get what's going at. Big eyes probably has a better chance of being hit than the Dragon Sack. And plus, they might hit big eye to promote number 74. You never know. So there's plenty of reasons why they could hit big eye. Um, but if, again, if they do, it'll be at 1, not 0. So don't worry, I'm done with the E-Dragon stuff. We're gonna have fun with Spellbooks. First of the Spellbook of Secrets. Now, as much as I would love to say Judgment Band or Judgment of 1, they're not gonna do that. Judgment just came out, so it's a moneymaker card. If they do end up hitting Judgment, will I be a happy camper? Fuck yes, I will be happy as hell if Judgment got fucking limited or banned. But it's not going to happen. There's no making money off the card. It just came out in Tachyon Galaxy in May. So, most next best thing, hit Secrets, which came out in Return of the Duelist. This is the one of the cards that searches out Judgment, and it speeds up the deck. Now, they could also have Beto, but Beto has more weaknesses, in my opinion, than Secrets, because you can veil or Beto, you can stop the summoning of Beto. There's a lot of things you can do um, to stop that card, as opposed to Secrets. Now, I think they're going to hit Secrets, as well as maybe... Uh, I know this purple card, and I'm, and there's two of them I feel like they could potentially hit. Uh, first off is, computer, thank you, is Spellbook of Fate. Spellbook of Fate is mainly here because they are going to want to push the new products. Because you got Judgment Light coming out with the new Bujin, got some new Archfiend stuff, some new Synchro shenanigans, they got Shadow Spectres, which introduced some more Bujin stuff, uh, some new Vampire support, as well as the Ghost Tricks. Fate here can screw over all those decks. It screws over the Bujin because Hetsuga is now useless um, because Fate doesn't target. It will screw over the Ghost Tricks because they can't chain the shit because you don't target again. It doesn't target. Um, will hurt vampires very deeply and also will hurt the Arch Fiends. Fate is one of those cards I feel like they're going to limit it to push the other products. Because, because of the fact, it really does hurt them since it doesn't target and they want to sell products. They have to really hit some of these cards if they want to sell, sell, sell products from Judgment of Light and Shadow Spectres. So I feel Fate is on the chopping block because of that reason. But another card they could potentially hit is Spellbook Star Hall. Because of the fact, it boosts your spellcasters by 100 for each spellbook, for, e for each spell counter on it. And plus, when it's destroyed, and since the graveyard, you get a free, you get special summon a spellcaster monster to the field with a level, with 
levels that are equal to or less than the number of counters on the card. So, it is a very powerful card, but I see Star Hall being staying at 3 and then Fate going to 1 as well as Secrets. Um, just to kind of slow them back a little bit and to push more products out the other way. Um, Evil Swarms. Don't worry guys, I don't really think Evil Swarms are going to be hit. I just open up here as an example. I don't really think Evil Swarms are going to be hit. One, because it's not a money deck. Ophion is at 5 bucks, like 5 to 10 dollars. That's crazy. This thing is fucking stupid as hell at times. But the problem is, it's not seeing a lot of play. That's the biggest thing. Evil Swarms aren't seeing a lot of play. It hasn't been really as effective as a lot of us thought it was. Because a lot of us are freaking out when this shit came out. We were afraid of this. Like, oh shit, Ophion's going to really fucking break this game. And he didn't really do anything. So they're not really going to hit, hit Evil Swarms at all. Um, Ophion's gonna stay at 3 in my opinion, and Investation, most of them play 2 anyway, so you'll pretty much have to limit that, if, but I don't think they're gonna limit Investation. So, Evil Swarms are pretty much safe. Th so now it's time for my, uh, couple cards that I like to see come off the list. Uh, my personal preference is what I want to see come off the list. Don't care what you have to say, it's what I want. And my computer doesn't want me clicking on it, apparently. Uh, we have Glow Ball! Global Bomb, I would like to see this thing come back to one because one, it'll promote the synchros that are, it's coming out in Just From The Light as well as a couple coming out in Shadow Spectres like that new level to Synchro Tuner. It's kind of a cool looking card. And it'll just promote plants a little bit more. Uh, Ophium being a three really does hurt plants so I don't think Global would do a whole lot. Um, it's still a very powerful card and it's a card that's in need of a reprint so I think if there's a reprint coming for it, it'll probably come back. It's a very good splash card, and it will help promote Sinkers a little bit more. Because since the promoted Sinkers, again, you know, and Trish being banned still, Glow Bulb is a little bit less destructive. A little bit less. It's still a very powerful card. The final card I'd like to come off the list from, from 0 to 1 is Goyo Guardian. For me, it's a personal favorite. I love Goyo Guardian. My Blackies have missed them dearly, and they are just anxious to use them once again. And plus... We got big eye of three, so why is Goyo still a one? And I'm just joking. I know why Goyo is still is still banned and all that stuff, but we're also getting Vulcan, so that will probably keep Goyo being banned because we're getting Vulcan. They want to push Vulcan in a sense, and if Goyo came back, they might steal the attention away from Vulcan from a lot of other decks. But you know, it's an option. Goyo can come back. So the final card I want to talk about is not something I want to come off. It's something I want to dispute by the mass packers of believers. Chaos Emperor Dragon, on for the end. Oh boy, where do I start with this? A lot of people are talking about how this card is coming off the list. It's coming back to one, guys. No, it's not. Actually, I know Konami's dumb enough to bring this thing back and the state of chaos and the state of decay this game is in right now. I, we all know how dumb they are half the time. This thing can never come back. This is in a whole new league of stupidity of effects. You think BLS is OP? This thing is beyond OP. Emperor Dragon shall never come back. It is a retarded card, especially when we have cards like Eclipse Wyvern running around like, hey, I banish Emperor Dragon, add it to my hand, and I can smash some of it and do all the fucking shit. If you want an Emperor Dragon, go play fucking Neo Daedalus. There's your Emperor Dragon. Um, a lot of people are talking about how, since Kaiba used it in his duel with Maximilian Pegasus, um, that is coming back. Uh, I'm going to dispute that right now. First off, he used other band cards such as Pot of Greed and Grace for Charity. So, by everyone's logic of, oh, this guy's coming back because Kyber used it in a duel, then that means Pot of Greed and Grace for Charity are coming back, at, uh, uh, coming back as well. See where I'm going at with this? And plus, Emperor Dragon is Kaiba's trump card. It's his fucking best card. So of course he's going to use his trump card in a duel, and he's used it effect to show the power of card text with Dragon Tower. I think it's Dragon Tower. I don't remember the card name, um, but yeah, it's why they used it was to show the power of card text. And plus, it's Kaiba. He is going to use that card, so he's going to remain shackled in the, in solitary confinement of the Shadow Room. Because yes. Every card that's banned is in the fucking Shadow Realm, and he's in solitary confinement, solitary confinement because he doesn't play well with others. He doesn't play well with others. So, may this guy never come back, and I just have to dispute everybody's beliefs. Yes, he is not coming back. He is not going to come back. 
It was just a fun little duel between two voice actors, and one used a trump card. Wig whoop dee doo doo doo. But when it comes to comedy, I also can't put, put it past it because they are dumb enough to bring this card back. And if he came back, oh god, we're fucked up the ass. Anyway, see you in semi limited. Okay, semi limited time. So first off, for semi limited, we have Book of Moon. Book of Moon's a card that could easily go to two for a lot of reasons. One, it's not seeing a lot of play. I think it's a good card at two. It's already a neck one, since you're technically using up a card to not really get rid of a card, just a set of monster. But it doesn't trip place. But also another reason why Book of Moon can definitely come to two is because it will support Ghost Tricks, which I'm sure Konami's gonna want to try to push since it's a brand new archetype. And Book of Moon will help support them as well. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about the Mermails. I, I feel like Mermails are not going to get all that much. They're going to pretty much breeze through the ban list, but maybe a couple of hits here and there. One of the cards that could possibly hit is Deep Sea Fever to 2. I don't really see her going to 1 because, just, like, what are Mermails doing right now? They're not doing a whole lot. And I just don't really see them getting hit too badly. So, at best, I can see Deep Sea Fever possibly going to 2 or Abyss Sphere going to 2. One of these two cards are probably going to go to 2. Maybe Diva to 1? I don't really see in the Atlantis being hit, um, just because it's like it's not really a problematic card. You know, sure it's not a money deck anymore. They're not really making a lot of money off it compared to E Dragons and spell books. But you also have to remember, it's not much of a it's not really a threat as of right now with the format we're in, uh, with some of the other decks that are kind of taking control. Um, so if they do eventually get it, it'll probably be in March if they become a very big nuisance in the next format, in the September format. But I just don't see Marmales really taking a big beating from the list. I, like, I, I see Spellbooks and E-Dragons taking more of a beating uh, than the Marmales do. Next to two, TG Striker. TGs aren't doing a whole lot. Striker will help boost up TGs as well as TG variants. With Ophion still at three... It's still very, very hard to run synchros and stuff like that because he completely shuts down TGs and other synchro based decks. But TG Striker will bring back some old favorite decks of a lot of people, such as TG Agents, uh, just TG Stun in general, and other TG variants like TG Plants, TG This, TG That, everybody TGs. It's just something that will really help out and speed up the game a little bit, give it a little more variety. And since synchros are kind of making a comeback in terms of um, new cards, uh, because these strikers are coming back to kind of help promote some more synchro plays. Next up, we have Black Whirlwind. Black Whirlwind can actually go to three, but I feel it's going to go to two and then three. Reason being is because we already have another Black Whirlwind as card out right now. It's at three, Wena Factory, which is a more powerful version of, of Black Whirlwind. Since Wena Factory works on either player's turn and is only and it activates when. Someone attempts to activate the effect and wind up, you get the search for any wind up monster you want. Black Whirlwind does have its stipulations. First off, it can only search for Blackwing monsters that have an attack with less than the monster that was summoned. And it only works on your turn and when you normal summon a Blackwing monster. And also, in order for Black Whirlwind to fully resolve and search, the Blackwing monster has to stay in the field. So, if it leaves the field before Whirlwind fully resolves, you don't get the search. Now, one of the big arguments with Whirlwind is that, oh, you can search a Kulu, you get an Honest out. That's so broken. Yes and no at the same time. Yes, you can search a Kulu, that's an Honest, that's pretty stupid. But at the same time, the thing with Kulu and Honest as type cards is the surprise factor. This is what really gets, this is what makes cards like Honest very, very powerful, is the fact that it's, it's a surprise factor. You attack into it. Not really, you aren't sure if they have the clue or not. When they drop the clue, that's when clue is at its most deadliest. When you know it's in the opponent's hand, you can either do one of two things. Tiptoe around clue or you can force your, the, the black wing user to go in, into a position to where they need to use the clue. Where it won't hurt you that much, but it pretty much forces the player to go, I need to drop the clue right here and right now. To where you can basically go ape shit with your deck in sort of a safe environment type of deal. So, Black Whirlwind, in a sense, is a lot more slower than some of the other cards out right now. And plus, we're in a format with Heavy Storm and Triple MST. You have a lot of back or hate. Whirlwind is not going to stay on the field for that long. Now, before I go on, I'll talk about Gale. I feel Gale would eventually come off the list of two. 
Um, but I feel Whirlwind's gonna come before Gale. Since Gale is a special summoner, it can half attack. Whirlwind's just a searcher, and it, it's like a continuous spell card. It can be easily destroyed by MSA. Whereas Gale is like a special summoner I can half. I feel like Whirlwind's gonna come back to 2 uh, or 3 before Gale even comes back to 2 or 3. Next up, we have Gladbeast Bestiari. Kind of the same thing with the other decks. Gladbeast aren't doing a whole lot. Best Yard, three, like the, the two, not three, uh, Bestie the two will help up Glad Beasts. It will give them a little bit more breathing room, so that way you don't, if you bottom is one Bestie, they have another one. Because anybody, plays, anybody who's ever played Glad Beasts, whether they are a fan of the deck or just play every once in a while, you know that when you pawn, when you're upon a bottomless that Bestie are, you're so soft, you pretty much scoop because Besties are ace in the hole. Makes guys Zaris, it makes a lot of crazy things happen, and... This is the big problem with the deck, is and it's at one. I don't think it'll Glass will still do anything with Bestie at two, but hey, it'll give him a little bit more speed, give him a little bit more consistency, and give him that one extra bestie just in case something happens to the other one. Simple as that. Um a card that a lot of people are talking about is Fire Formation Tinky. Now a lot of people are saying this card's gonna get hit to either two or one. Um if it does get it, it's probably gonna go to two, but I don't really see a lot happening to Tinky. Mainly because we have three Axis Fire Fist coming out soon. Oh, it's already sort of out in TSG, but now we're getting Chicken. Um, they're going to want to push that. You have the Boonjin coming out. Tinky helps the Boonjin. You know, they have things that this thing can help, so they're going to push those archetypes, push those decks. So, I don't feel like Tinky is really going to go anywhere anytime soon. But if it does get, like I said, it's probably going to go to if it does end up getting hit. Finally, we got Mizuki. Mizuki it probably will come to two to help promote the vampires. Mizuki is a very powerful card in the vampire archetype, in the new vampire support. It will help if speeds up the deck, allows you get big powerful monsters on the field and sort of stimulate fast. Um, with Birth and the Dimension still at one, Mizuki probably still won't do a whole lot. It will get. It's not only will support the new vampire stuff, but it'll also give zombie decks the boost that they do need. It's a, the is enough to make like Zombie Zero One? Not really. They also need at least Burrow to two and Plague and all that stuff. There's a lot of factors involving for Zombies to become a really competitive deck again. But Mizuki to two will just give them a little bit more of a push, as well as more money to Konami so they can sell the new Vampire stuff and Shadow Spectres. So that's really all my semi limited stuff. Um, if I missed anything in semi limited, uh, you'll see annotation, and I forgot to mention that in the first, second, the band limited and stuff like that. Um, you'll see annotations of something like, hey, I missed this type of deals, and I'll see you in the unlimited section. Okay, unlimited time. I actually could have lashes on that, that without having to make a cut. And, oh my god, that was a very glowing. I got negative pick up to Suki, man. I was like, oh my god, that looks so freaking ugly and creepy at the same time. Like, look at it! It's like it's staring through your soul when you eat it. Like, ugh. And we have Tsuki Yomi for Unlimited. Do I need to explain why? It's not gonna do anything in three! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the Tsuki Yomi! I don't need to explain her. Um, after that, Bon Chapeau. Bon Chapeau uh, could probably come to three. I think they'll probably do it to support the Fast and Fiends, but anything after that. Just probably only reason why Bound Trap might come to three. Um, another card that I actually forgot to t mention in here is Power Rally. That could come to um, three as well. Um, with actually Thunder King. I completely forgot this. Um, Power Rally could come to two along with the all powerful Thunder King Ryo. Oh, um, I feel Thunder King could definitely come back to three. Um, the reason was at two was to support the spell books, but Thunder King at three, like. Was he really that bad at three? Like, come on, people. I don't think he was a bad card at three. You know, people like people are like, oh my god, I'm so glad he went to two. To me, like, I didn't think he deserving to go to two. I was shocked that he didn't get it for the longest time. Um, because how many people complained about Darnie King, but I don't think he's worth being on the list. It's just that card, nine times attack and stop searching. Oh well. You know, I think he could definitely come to three. You know, come back to three. I, I just don't think he was deserving to go to two. I think he was fine at three. That's my personal preference with Thunder King. Um, but anyway, that was my ban list. So, anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And give me thoughts on it in the comment section below, as well as your opinions on my list, as well as what you think will probably happen on the list. Um, you don't have to explain why. I will actually like you to explain why, uh, so I can get a full in-depth 
exactly kind of understand your point of view and all of this. But I think I, did, I was pretty fair in the list. I didn't really destroy any decks. I helped out some former decks. And I, I, I think I was pretty fair with my list. Um, I don't think I was uh, too harsh or anything. If I was, you know, you can call me on it. But I don't think 